Now, let's take a look at matters concerning youth and politics today on this fun Monday morning. If you're just joining us, thank you so much for sticking with Y254 TV, your number one youth station. Remember, we are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also streaming live through our website, and that's at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. My name is Ram Aguko. Thank you so much for being with us. And of course, in this discussion on youth and politics, I am with Edward Gidaiga Muito, who is the CEO of Vision 2030 Youth. Karim San Edward? Thank you very much. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling energetic. Uh, thank you for hosting me. All right. Uh, it's always good to come to Y254. Asanda Sana. It's a leading young people station. Yeah. And yeah. I believe yeah. as young people, we should support this kind of uh, stations mm -hmm. and uh, watch them much more because uh, they have a lot of information that can help young people in this country. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. And uh, wow, we'll to <laughs> Thank you so much. And, 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 and remember, uh, from wherever you are watching us from home, the hashtag you can use on Twitter is uh, uh, why, in the, why in the morning. That is the hashtag, why in the morning. Tag me at Ram Aguko. The official station handle is at Y254 channel. Head over to our Facebook page also and participate on our Facebook platform. We have the question of the day that has been posted on the page. Like the page, follow us on our, those particular pl platforms. And, uh, of course, feel free to let us know where you're watching us from. This is Youth and Politics. Let's take a look at what has been taking center stage in, uh, in the nation. Mm -hmm. First things first, Edward. Yes. Um, before we, we touch on matters concerning youth uh, politics, Vision 2030 Youth, what yes. is that all about? Oh, yes. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, like you said, I'm from Vision 2030 Youth, a multifaceted uh, youth-centered uh, organization mm -hmm. um, that uh, is very progressive and uh, runs up programs around the country mm -hmm. that enable young people to move forward. Okay. Um, it started off by asking ourselves, what is Vision 2030? As you know, Kenya has a vision. Kenya has a path and a direction that it's supposed to be going. But you'll find that a lot of young people don't see that vision. They see maybe other visions of other countries and desire those countries. But it's until young people of this nation begin to desire to see their vision and the country's vision, and that's how Vision 2030 Youth came about. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that then we can be the leading organization to go around the country enabling young people to get the information about the vision. Because in that vision, there is a place for the youth. Mm -hmm. The reasons why there is so much unemployment is because not so much youth are looking at entrepreneurship as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So us as Vision 2030 have looked at the entire economy sector and understood there is agriculture. There are those basic sectors that have to operate for Kenya to be existing. Mm. So something like agriculture is one of the best options for young people to invest in or to get into because agriculture currently, the average age of a farmer in Kenya is 65. So mm -hmm. you can imagine 12% of young people in Kenya are in agriculture. That's a very little number. And yet you'll find this youth come from the rural areas where their parents have enough land that they can start tilling, they can start producing in those lands. And agriculture is not just about digging uh, with a djembe. There is mechanization. There is also agribusiness, what we talk about value addition and mm. value chain opportunities. So young people need to open up their minds and look at that. And also Vision right. 2030, mm. just to conclude, mm -hmm. uh, we look at things in a different perspective. For example, we have a program called Bilateral Recovery Program. Bilateral meaning this country as a nation has signed bilateral agreements with nations around the world. Mm. You've seen His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta and even other members of our government travel to foreign countries and sign bilaterals. Mm -hmm. In all those bilaterals, I'm sure there is something there for the youth. Right. So we right. as Vision 2030 have looked at WTO, UNCTAD, TICAD, all those uh, institutions that have come to Kenya to enable Kenya stand up and lift up its capacity. We believe by creating that awareness mm. and enabling the youth to demand right. for those agreements so that they can find 
their future. All right, all right. Thank you so much. Um, that is a vision 2030 youth. Youth, yeah. Uh, um, uh, and, and of course, I love the fact that you, you, you're targeting the young people of, of, of this country uh, to empower them in regards to that particular uh, uh, area. Yes. Um, and, and, and keep doing what you're doing. Let's, and let's, let's talk about matters concerning the nation. And I'd like sure. to hear your, your thoughts in regards to this. Mm -hmm. Because the stage has been set for uh, an epic battle yes. at the Supreme Court. Yes. We are looking at a scenario where we're going to see um, the Azimio uh, 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 lawyers mm -hmm. going to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. and of course this is a petition that uh, is going to be filed by 2 p.m. today yes. and we have Wafula Chebukati and Truto who are uh, going to be the main respondents to mm -hmm. this petition. Yes. Uh, what do you think about the likelihood of uh, of, of, uh, of, of this? Um, are they going to win? Um, are they going to lose? What is the turnout according to you in this petition? Thank you very much. Um, firstly, I would like to say that, uh, and first thank Kenyans, young people, old people, all Kenyans for having a peaceful election. Uh, for the first time, we've been able to have an election without a lot of violence or any violence, so to speak. It has been somehow free and fair. Even going by what the observers um, who had come around the country, the international observers, some from the Americas, some from Europe, some from all other these places, African Union, East African Corporation, all of these people followed the process because the election is a process, it's not just an event. And you remember the kind of tension that the country was going through when we were waiting for the announcement and there was so much tension, you could see that there's going to be something, anxiety was all over the country. But we overstood that and yes, uh, William Samoy Ruto was elected uh, president-elect according to IEBC and the announcement that was made. However, the country which is a democracy following the constitution of 2010, which gives an elaborate direction after which an announcement is made by the IEBC chairman. So Azimio La Umoja is in its rightful place, whereby they are going to court to say that they object or they don't agree mm -hmm. with the outcome of the election. Mm -hmm. However, I think the burden of proof lies on Azimio mm. because UDA will be given all the, or, or uh, Kenya Kwanzaa will be given all the evidence, all uh, the accusations and all um, proof from Azimio, you see, mm. from the side of Azimio. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to scrutinize it because they have their legal time uh, allowed and the timelines will allow them. Uh, actually, in, in regards to that particular timeline, mm -hmm. uh, because once the petition uh, has been filed yes. today, there yes. is that 2 p.m. deadline. Exactly. Once it's filed, yes. the uh, um, uh, Azimio will have 24 hours to uh, serve, serve the respondents yes. and uh, the respondents will have in turn four days. Yes. Uh, to uh, file their response. Yes. So um, after that, they, ac according to what uh, the, uh, the, the according to the information out there mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that the, uh, uh, there will be a petition uh, a petitioner yes. uh, who will have one day to file an interlocutory application. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And of course, on the uh, on, on the eighth day mm -hmm. after filing this petition, the Supreme Court will will hold a pre-trial conference. Yes. Hearing of the petition will. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, will start immediately after that. Yes. And of course, the judge's verdict will come later on and yes. that will be final. So if you look at this particular uh, mm -hmm. timeline mm -hmm. that we have, yes. four days, the eight days, and, yes. and, 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 and the, the, petition, uh, the petitioners uh, <coughs> being given time to respond, mm -hmm. do you feel like this process is going to be a replica of what happened in the previous general election? I mean... Um it would not be really a replica. It would have its own uh, mechanisms because you mm. can imagine at that time uh, William Samoy Ruto and Uhuru Kenyatta were on one side and Raila Odinga was on the other side. Yeah. I think the setup this time is very tough. I, I believe even this is a much more closer election 
uh, to mm. call mm. Um, compared to uh, you know the and you know during the other time in 2017 yeah. Raila Odinga did not run he boycotted the election mm. so Uhuru Kenyatta was elected with 98.2 percent yes however this time the numbers are so close very very close so it wouldn't be like the 2017 it will be it the, will be a lot David of Baraga rally the election no 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 this will be a lot of uh, you have to prove your evidence because in the end of the day mm. we have to also have faith in our institutions I believe uh, Azimio also went in the election knowing if they win, they were going to be announced by the same institution. Mm -hmm. Or if uh, Kenya Kwanza the same way. Or even uh, Wajakoya and the other Mr. Wahiga. Mwaore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, so everybody knew that uh, the election would have an outcome. However, disputes are always allowed. And uh, Azimio will have its day to bring the dispute to the public and say this is the evidence. And we as a public also, you remember, we, you know, there is no password. Um, I believe the, the, the system that IBC had put in place because we have uh, many MPs elected, we have many MCAs elected, we have many senators elected, 48, 47 county women rep elected, and we haven't heard of any polling station uh, drama. We haven't really heard of any matters that happened during the polling station or during the election period. This is now post-election where we are hearing that there might have been some anomalies. And you know even uh, globally uh, it's recognized in the world. There's no perfect election in the world. So this is going to be a grand battle. I believe uh, the battle is here. But the battle doesn't end there. In the mm. end of the day, you know the, the power that is... Um, given unto the Supreme Court. Uh, the Supreme Court has power to either nullify the election or accept it was free and fair. Mm -hmm. So once it nullified, you know what happened in 2017, yeah. there's a re-election. Mm -hmm. So that is probably going to be the outcome. But uh, we will see. I don't want to jump my gun because I haven't seen the evidence provided for by Azimio. Mm. But once we see them, because they're the complainant, then we'll be able to uh, make a sober decision, even as a nation. Even as a nation. Yes. And, 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 and I love what you're saying here, because at the end of the day, as a nation, we are looking forward to having something that uh, is going to uh, uh, take the country forward mm -hmm. in terms of matters concerning peace. Mm -hmm. But uh, the conversation that has been ongoing uh, also is in regards to the commissioners yes. that uh, uh, are of the IBC. Here we're looking at the four commi commissioners. We have Sherera, uh, mm. uh, Francis Wanderi, we have mm. Justice uh, uh, Nyanga and Irene mm. Masit, who mm. uh, have maintained mm. that the numbers released by the uh, the chairman of IBC, Wafole Chebukati, mm. uh, were erroneous and uh, that they, uh, that he ought to have verified them before declaring the final results. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the trends that have youth have been talking about on Twitter, mm. the 0.01% and the 0.1%, yes. yes. and the opaqueness of mm. the whole process. Mm. Mm. Uh, what's your thoughts in regards to that particular issue and how it uh, plays in this uh, case? Um, I don't want to seem biased, but... Mm. For example, take a company, it has board members. Yeah. When you are making a decision, you, you dispute when the board is there. Yeah. And in this case, IBC under the Election Act 2011 is like a board. That's how it operates. Okay? So if there are any disputes, you bring it forth within the board and you raise it up. And secondly, if IBC had a national tallying center, in, at Bombers of Kenya, yes. where you saw all agents, according to the law, all, super, all um, uh, chief agents and agents of different uh, uh, candidates were all uh, pilgrimaged at the uh, Bombers of Kenya. So I felt a bit um, taken off myself personally, and I've had this discussion going around as well, mm. to this point that how did they desire to leave the bombers of Kenya, right? Uh -huh. As it was the board and the office of the IBC National Presidential Tiling Center to drive over 10 kilometers to the CBD to a hotel to make that to, announcement. To I believe okay. if they made it in front, you see even the fracas was there, mm. everything was heated up there. So they should have raised that matter in front of the TV in front of the public there 
so that that matter is dealt with there. Because now what happened is later is now you can see people are trying to say, you've seen this um, on social media. Mm. And I know social media can be faked around, especially now young people need to be very careful of a lot of fake news. But we've seen in social media where they have put two different pictures of the lady Cheshire and, and Raila Odinga speaking. And they yeah. have tried to show that they're speaking actually the same, same statement. And they, and they, and so they you see, that's what the who? authenticity. So if they yeah. stayed there, yeah. they would have made this whole process more authentic. But for them to leave now, it then creates another shadow. Because now the, the body... And then you can hear also uh, in the legal arguments of uh, different people, especially like now uh, Kenya Kwanzaa, because they're the ones who are saying you're, you're, you're stopping our election. They are saying that the, 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 the burden of announcing or the, the responsibility of announcing the presidential election mm -hmm. is, is held under the office of the chairperson who is the national presidential uh, returning officer. Like in the, in the constituency, there is a returning officer. Yes, yes. You don't see anybody else going to announce. Mm. In the county, there is a CRO who is mm. a county returning officer. And now in the national, there is a national, national returning, returning officer. officer. Who is who, Wafula Chebukati. Who is Wafula Chebukati. Yeah. However, if it's in a board decision whereby we are saying procurement needs to go to this company or this company, then there is a vote. And in the vote is where the, 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 the commissioners would have uh, they are say, but to this one, even the deputy PO or the deputy RO, did he announce together with the RO? No. When the RO was present, only in Embakasi, where the RO was, uh, you heard about that story for yeah, Embakasi very East. Yeah. Very sad story where a young man who has a young family has now lost his life because of election. Mm. We just hope this election matter as a young person ends, so that Kenya can move on. And we hope that the judges will be able to be fair and just, as it's in our constitution and our national anthem, that they provide justice and justice for everyone. And, and I'm looking at the IEBC, and it, it has had um, a very long past or history mm. of um, commissioners resigning, yes. especially during the election period, either before, during, or after. And uh, this, the, 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 this has brought about to you know the questions being raised about the um uh, the, the stability of this particular institution um the division with, within the commission that led to the four commissioners uh, to call for that particular press conference that you've just highlighted yes. to disown this particular result for mm -hmm. the uh, election is also likely to feature in this particular case mm -hmm. i know I, I i i believe so yes and uh, by yesterday it was still not clear if the four who include co uh, 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 the uh, commission vice uh, chairperson juliana Cherera mm -hmm. would appear as respondents or witnesses yes. but now i'm looking at the legitimacy of the iebc mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's going to uh, last to the point that it will come and, uh, and, and, and see through the next general election? I know this, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the future here. I think... As the commission. Yes, uh, that's a very good question and a very permanent question to Kenyans. Because, for example, we are business people, yeah. as young people, we trade. But immediately we talked about two months to election. If you are having business of exporting your, your fruits or your, your vegetables abroad, mm -hmm. you are told now, we, we are not buying now from Kenya yeah. because of instability. Mm -hmm. If you had a business transaction with a foreigner who had come to this country, they closed down their companies and they said minimum uh, engagement. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this also follows down to even businesses closing down. You saw even during that period of election, a lot of businesses had closed down. And I thank even the government, current government, for trying to uh, bring back normalcy, you know, which mm. is very important. Mm. Mm. However, I believe that uh, the, the IEBC commissioners and their, their stand, which under the Constitution have their right to oppose, they have their right to speak their, their, what they feel, is, is their opinion. And indeed, uh, don't believe even Chebukati has a right to stop them from saying that. Mm -hmm. However, I would like uh, a, a clear process. We would like a clear process of uh, 
engagement because if they are chosen as witnesses, then it might even look biased. You understand? Mm. Because as a witness, a witness and you are part of the, the, commission. the commission and you've taken the oath of secrecy, you've taken the oath of uh, allegiance or whatever the oath you know they don't take even the normal oath they take their own oaths because these are independent offices mm. uh, established under the constitution 2010 so there is we need to be very careful but however it is good for kenya's democracy to experience this because once and for all we will know what the process was and better off this time there is no mystery like a password you remember about the server, the issue yeah. about the server. The server not being open. At least open. this time, you yeah. know, the server being not open or not closed, this time we have a portal. So everything is within the portal. Will, will this commission, the IEBC, mm -hmm. last to the point that it sees through to the next general election in 2027? In your view? In my view, any person who will come in will want to change it, be it Raila Odinga or be it William Ruto, because, or even the people of Kenya. You know, in the end of the day, uh, if we elect a president, and, and I know the constitution says the sovereignty of the nation lies with the people, that doesn't mean because we've given our sovereignty or they have borrowed a bit of it, that oh. means that we as Kenyans don't have our own civil rights. We have civil rights, and we as Kenyans, if we feel aggrieved against the IBC, or we feel that there needs to be more reform, that process has to continue. So, 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 so but one, thing, one thing you have to give credit. Yeah. One thing you have to give credit to this IBC. Mm -hmm. Unlike the last time which the IBC ran the election, in many quarters and in all quarters, you could hear of praises of how the IBC ran the election. Mm -hmm. Only perhaps at this final time where there is this issue which has been raised. But the IBC, everybody in Kenya, because even the way they managed uh, the whole process. The whole process. This time was very unique. Imagine uh, there was a choir. There was a choir. <laughs> there was a choir. <laughs> eh? When uh, Akina Nani were bashing uh, IBC officials, <laughs> there was a choir singing for us. So you could see the positive energy. And uh, I believe Chebukati tried his level best. It's not an easy job. You mm. remember Kivuito. He was called Mr. Kivuito. Yeah. You remember what he... is Ki, Kivuito, eh? Yeah, Kivuito. Yeah, you remember the kind of stress the, the, the Mze went through mm. just because of that election. Election mm. is not the end of life. Mm -hmm. And I believe Kenyans have proved to the world in Africa and all over that you don't have to fight because of an election. Election is just the freedom of expression freedom of association, freedom of political engagement. It's not a matter of life and death. I, I, I love what you said. And uh, I, I saw a particular meme online mm -hmm. when somebody was uh, making a joke yes. about uh, if you are to apply for a job interview mm -hmm. and you're to say that uh, you can work under pressure, you can indicate clearly, for example, I was at the choir at Bomas. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, that, that one is... Uh, the choir at Bomas is, uh, is a very spiritual choir. I believe uh, they <laughs> held their um, their cool. They held their cool. Yeah, throughout and that whole process. Throughout the whole process, and uh, I believe that's the spirit of Kenya. The IBC's performance for this election. Do you mm -hmm. think that um, if we are to go to court, uh, and of course the, the 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 Supreme Court has fourteen days to deal with this particular matter, um, will it? tarnish the whole reputation uh, of uh, Wafula Chebukati, considering the fact that, you know what, he has tried to bring changes in the, in, in, in the commission, he has tried to bring changes in this particular general election, ensuring that all Form 34As were sent, you know, to the cloud and everybody, every Kenyan could access it just from the comfort of their uh, form. Um... To be quite honest, on my opinion, is I don't want to kind of stigmatize or uh, prejudice uh, Wafula Chebukati. Um, going by his statements that he's, he's given, he's even talked about being profiled and his members of staff being profiled. They're yeah. working still under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, what, I, what I feel, and I want to ask uh, the commissioners, the four commissioners, did they report this incident to the police? Have they done a statement with the police to report? Because if they say there was a fraud, the people who 
deal with this crime under the penal code is the Directorate of Criminal Investigation. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. Even yeah. Chebukati, when he was attacked, or when he said that his staff are being attacked, he wrote a whole letter and reported the matter the DCI. to the to the N NPCS National Police Service. Yes. Now that's all of it, including the DCI yeah. and the administration police. Mm -hmm. So I hope that uh, the, the, the the commissioners have reported this matter, so that even what they have said has to be in a statement which they are, it's under oath, so mm -hmm. that it's not you know right now what we are seeing a lot from the commissioners is is social media statements and uh, news statements. Irrespective of that, we need to see a signed statement which is uh, certified by, a, by an affidavit mm -hmm. saying that this is my true standing and that will all be done when we go to court. Now, um, w w uh, interestingly, even as we talk about these matters concerning the court, mm. um, the president-elect William Bruto Yes. Um, has been making statements in regards to um, uh, uh, planning for the future. And he said this, and I quote, mm -hmm. that for the first time, yes. they have not planned demonstrations or other undesirable acts. This is a good way to start growing our young democracy in the right direction. Mm -hmm. This is what D.P. Ruto said. What is, what's your, th your thought in regards to that? Because he also thanked President Uru Kenyatta and promised to carry on mm -hmm. from where he lives. And he said this, that he will have his respect and enjoy his space. This is the DP uh, talking about uh, uh, Uru Kenyatta. I, uh, this is the president, mm, president elect. elect. Yes, <laughs> so, yes, yeah. yes. And he said he will have his respect and enjoy his space, yes. and I am going to continue from where he will have left. Yes. I think that statesman, that's statesmanly, mm. uh, because irrespective of what people may say, and irrespective of what people's views, private or public, um, it's still there as a fact, and I, I'm glad you corrected yourself because yeah. he hasn't been sworn in. Yeah. But it's still there as a fact that William Ruto is a president-elect. Mm -hmm. And his stature and his uh, demeanor has changed because obviously you saw even his security was enhanced. Mm -hmm. um, he's, uh, he's gotten uh, various uh, ac acknowledgements and various uh, congratulations from various uh, states all over Africa and in the world. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's important and prime for him to behave as such yeah. as a president, as a president elect. And it was a good uh, show of uh, olive branch to His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta and uh, seeking the president and saying that we will look after you and your interest will be looked after. Mm -hmm. And saying, mm -hmm. like kind of an olive branch, and saying the election has ended, yeah. um, irrespective of there being a petition, uh, life has to go on. And we are going to continue. And we are going to continue. Left and, and, and the constitution also. Left. And it's not even William Ruto himself. Mm -hmm. I saw that yesterday when uh, Gashagwa, in one of the, state, uh, one of the uh, appearances that they made in Kiambu in Gedongori, yeah. when... Uh, <laughs> Waitito said uh, <laughs> that uh, he seemed like he wanted to be vigilant mm. ag against uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. No, Uhuru Kenyatta is a respected African statesman, and I'm happy that even Gashagua corrected uh, Waitito and told him that we cannot have that bad politics. In during a competition, people say a lot of things, but once the competition is over. We have to make peace and the country has to continue. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I do really, really congratulate William Ruto for, for the things that he said. Yes. And, and, and he, he, he pledged to revive projects worth 500 billion Kenya shillings. This is William Ruto. Mm. He, and uh, uh, he said that these projects had stalled and he pledged to revive them. He also promised that no part of the country will be sidelined by mm. his administration. I think... Uh, to be very honest and to be fair to the to the gentleman, yeah, he had a vision and uh, he demonstrated very well um, in the period and uh, he provided a manifesto, and I believe he went around the country with his team to do what is called economic forums, mm -hmm. county economic forums or regional economic forums to find out what ails the, the community and society in its own diversity. 
Mm. I believe even uh, he has the Nyanza one, he has the different areas. And therefore, he, 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 he's simply saying what he's going to do in his vision. Mm -hmm. And uh, even if it was Raila Odinga, whom we respect a lot, um, Right Honorable Raila Odinga, mm -hmm. even him, he would have been saying the same. So it's, it's, it, we shouldn't look at it in any negative way. Yeah. Uh, we should actually be saying, wow, if one of them can do it, if William Ruto can do it mm. and make that happen and put a cent in someone's pocket and, and change someone's life and uplift and, 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 and enable young people in this country, like our organization, what mm. we stand for. Yeah. For example, like the SMEs, we are very, very dear about SMEs. We have a program called Student SME Program. Mm -hmm. If you look at the rate of unemployment in this country, it's above 60%. And who are these? Okay, those who have not gone to high, uh, high school or, or tertiary education, mm. you rank them or demograph them as a underemployed. You understand? Yeah. There's a category there get, called underemployed uh -huh. because they have not had to go to school and they have not had the opportunity to, I'm not saying it in a bad way, but according to the statistics. Then you yeah, have... Be, be, because, the, okay, that, that's where you can place them. Yes. Yeah. Then you have the unemployed. The unemployed are those who are meant to have been having had employment. Yes. Because they went to school, they got a degree, they got the skills, but they don't have a job. So those are your unemployed. So 60% of these unemployed people who are the students, us as Vision 2030 Youth have a program which we're partnering with various universities in this country to raise the consciousness of these students who are in university today so that they can then start appreciating entrepreneurship. Say, if you're a lawyer, the basic need to start a company in Kenya is a business name. Mm. Like if you can have the business name ACT. Yeah. It's the most basic yeah. form of a company yes. which you can start yourself. So you can even start a paralegal company while you're still in school. Because even students do paralegal services. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they need to build an experience so that by the time they are deciding to have their own law firm or perhaps become a partner in a law firm, they have to show and I, I love how the they have applied their skill in a workplace. I love the direction that we're taking yes. uh, in, the, in this particular conversation here yes. because now you're bringing in the youth aspect mm -hmm. of it. Yes. And, 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 and I love the fact that, you know, we are, what we're saying, that as a country, we must move on. Yes. We must move on. Yes, we elections come and go. We must move on. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what do you think um, uh, is, 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 what is your position mm -hmm. in regards to now the youth themselves? Yes. Uh, they need to um, start getting those jobs. They yes. need to start applying, mm. going for those interviews. Mm. But there is this perception that is still there, mm. that you know what, still, the elections are still ongoing. Mm. You know, there's this, that, that perception. And I was interacting with a few youths last week. Yes. And they were telling me that they cannot move on yes. with their lives because mm. they are either too excited about the president-elect mm. or too disappointed about, uh, uh, about the, the petition. Yes. Which way for the youth? Youth, I speak to you personally and call upon you to listen to yourself. Every young person in this country has a need. One, what are those basic needs? Any young person who's above 21, 25, probably is living on their own. Mm -hmm. They have to pay rent. Those same youth in that house they're living in probably have a young family. They have to feed their family. They have to clothe their family. Those same youth there, in order to clothe or feed their family, they need energy, electricity, they need gas, they need um, kerosene or whatever it is they're using. Even just to leave the house and go to the streets, that youth needs fare. That youth needs transport money. So I believe youth need to wake up. This is a wake-up call. Let us take advantage of this opportunity. We have just come from a difficult part of COVID-19. Most of the young people's businesses, because young people hardly save, young people hardly have savings because they live hand to mouth. Many countries in the world that have succeeded were not built by the old generation. They were built by young people who decided to make 
a choice. Mm. And that choice you've already made politically. It's out of your hands. But the choice that remains in your hands is you need to feed your family. You need to clothe yourself. So find out and figure out and not reinventing the wheel. Mm. Getting into entrepreneurship. Getting out there looking for those jobs again. Exactly. Engaging in positive peer mentorship. Not sitting at home, lagging, watching TV. Go out there and look for a skill. Right now, there are many TVETs under the Jubilee government, never like any other government before, that they built TVETs all over the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. TVET was a solution that I believe was brought about, for example, in the, if you all know about the geopolitics, I'll be very short with this. I'll take you all the way to North America. Mm -hmm. In the 1930s, after the First World War, North America was like Kenya. Mm. Today, Kenya is facing an economic depression. Mm -hmm. Agree or don't agree, mm -hmm. it is a fact. 80%, 70% of our people live in abject poverty. And this, is, this is where or North you America don't agree. was. Yes, this is where back, it was back then. back then. But I always say my best president of America, after Obama, who is our Kenyan, the best was Franklin D. Roosevelt, to me. He came up with various programs that changed the America. So, 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 so. And created employment for the youth, created creative economy like Hollywood, mm -hmm. created and.